they're not only interviewing you, you are interviewing them. Me, are they gonna take me? Are they gonna like me? No, think like, do I like them? Do I wanna work here? Do I fit in here? Um, I got requested to talk about my post-college journey, kind of advice for entering the workforce and things like that. How to kind of get your first job, get out there, get into the workforce, and maybe just advice on adjusting. For me, it was very fast paced. I remember my senior year of college kind of expecting this to take a lot longer than it did for me to get a job. I do think I put so much more preparation into the job searching process than I did see a lot of my peers and I think that's why I was able to get a job so fast. I think that mixed with a bit of luck is kind of how I landed my first job. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. As far as preparation, preparation starts for me like that your senior year. It doesn't start like the day you graduate. It starts way before that. And it's hard because, you know, you're trying to graduate, you're studying for finals, trying to pass, get good grades, all of this stuff. There's a lot going on, but at the same time, like don't put off thinking and planning and preparing for your next step. Really, really, it's important during this time to do research. It's important to network, find opportunities, because if you are stagnant opportunity, it's going to be very hard to identify opportunities for yourself. For me, what I started doing was as soon as like I graduate in the spring, so like May, January, I went like full on, like I would, I was dedicating myself to researching, finding jobs, applying, and all that. January came around and it kind of depends on what you're going into, but for me, like I had to prepare for interviews a lot and do a lot of studying and a lot of intense, like it was just intense. Um, but I am a very anxious person, so I have to go into things very prepared in order to feel good about it and feel less anxious, feel confident. So I was like, all right, what do I need to do? For me personally, I was like, I want to show up as a very well-rounded candidate. I was like, you know what? I'm going to work on making myself a website. I, since then, I don't have a website anymore, but at the time, I bought a domain name. I made basically an online resume. I'm not saying you need to do this. Um, obviously, have a good professional resume, but do something extra if you can. I made this online website. It had like tabs explaining my volunteer experiences, internships, um, classes I've taken that has like relevant coursework, things like that. I had on my website, I had a photo of me like in a very professional outfit, had that set up, so a little bio about me, so I had that. Um, I was able to also reference that during interviewing time. When it came to interviewing, I was like, oh yeah, you can reference my website and on this page, you know, I had this experience um, volunteering at this place and whatever. I was able to reference different things from my website. I'm not saying everyone needs one, but it did help me and I think my interviewers were very impressed at the time. I think there's just a lot of competition now, especially just recently, I think, is the job market's not amazing and there's so much more competition. So doing something to stand out is very, very helpful. As far as the preparation phase, I got a literal Google Doc and I wrote out like I looked up top 50 most asked interview questions and um, the way I did that is I wrote them out on a list and I just went through and kind of grouped them into ones that were very similar and I wrote out my answers for every single question. I was prepared. Then I took my answers. I made sure those sounded really good. I didn't have chat GPT back then, but I feel like now you could really utilize that to get better wording. Um, but don't, you know, don't overdo it, don't sound robotic, but to, you know, kind of amp it up a bit, I would definitely recommend using something like ChatGPT. So I wrote out kind of bullet points for each answer, not necessarily like word for word what I wanted to say, because that's obviously if you get nervous, you're not going to be able to remember that. So I wrote those out and I had like a six page document of interview questions on my google doc then because i'm extra i took those interview questions and i put them into quizlet and i made myself little flashcards. and i just had like friends ask me i had my family ask me and i just wanted to kind of get in the situation where i can make myself nervous because it is very nerve-wracking to interview and i would have them quiz me like give me a random one and I would try to like give a good answer, even if it wasn't exactly what was on my flashcard, 
just being able to improv and kind of give something a really solid answer was something I was working on. Actually kind of asking a family member or friend it made me more nervous so I was able to practice like being in the feeling of nervousness. Kind of from there I felt like very from that point on very very confident and prepared for an interview. Like I felt good. I was like any question you ask me I have and one thing that helped me also improv on these kind of questions I had to do a behavioral interview. I think like everyone's gonna have to do that. That's just a part of every job. Um, for that, a lot of times they want you to answer in a star format. And what that is, is star format is situation, task, action, and results. That's the template you're gonna follow when asked a behavioral question like, like, have you ever dealt with a difficult coworker? If so, how did you handle it? Or difficult like project partner in school or something like that. And I feel like that's just a very common question. I, I did actually get asked that on my interview and I don't remember the specific story I told, but I did tell everything in star format. And what you can do is think of kind of, again, look up like what are the most popular questions that are asked as far as like behavioral and like story kind of questions, star questions and group those and create like five, four or five stories that you can draw from and pull from and even change like small details of the story in order to give a good interview answer. And so you can take that same story like dealing with a difficult coworker and you can apply it to different behavioral questions. It doesn't just have to be saved for that one question. So if they're like, oh, how do you deal with a difficult coworker? Oh, have you ever had a challenge and had to overcome it? That can apply for both of those. And so you can kind of keep that story in the back of your mind when interviewing and be ready to tell it for any question it can apply to. And you can slightly change the result or change the actions you took or like describe why you took them kind of to tailor it to that question they're asking. Or one of my star questions, uh, let's say if they ask, did you ever have to have a situation where your manager or someone above you was making you do something but you had to change their mind and use data and facts to change their mind? So that was like a very specific question. It kind of threw me off. So I had to think on the spot for that one. So for my star answer, I did, okay, the situation was I worked at a bakery and we had to do like special orders. And the way we did them was so chaotic. Like we were always losing the papers for the special orders. Like we were, people were getting really mad. Customers were upset. That was kind of the situation is like we would take the paper from the customer, write it down and then like stick it in the back and it would get lost or like dirty or whatever. The task, I, I was not really given a task, but I gave myself a task um, to kind of fix the situation, alleviate it, and figure out a better system. The actions I took, I pretty much decided on a folder system, and what I did was I had like three three folders that I taped to the wall. Like it was, it was like um, red for incoming orders that have not been reviewed yet, purple for orders that have been reviewed and are like currently in progress, and then blue for pickup orders. So then whenever I'm in the front and I need to go grab a pickup order from the back, I can grab the finished paper and go pick it up and know exactly like when and what time and what's in the order. So something like that where I, um, and the result was I had to change my manager's mind by like showing her that the folder system actually was super helpful and trying it out after two weeks, we didn't have any more missed orders. And for that, um, the result was just happier customers, happier manager, she was convinced, she loved my idea, all that kind of stuff. That was like a very simple response, but again, you can really take anything like projects in school or internships or anything like that um, and apply it to these kind of situations. Another thing is also just having a good resume. Um, I kind of touched on this when I'm talking about my website, but get your resume reviewed by if you're in college your college counselor like they have career resources for you they're there to get you a job so utilize that um, i never had mine reviewed by someone at college but i have like friends who are in the workforce um, my sister had older friends that do hr and so they were able to review my resume and give me some feedback on it so things like that if you know people in hr get a resume review it's very helpful Kind of the main thing I was trying to follow was I didn't have a job yet. Having relevant coursework, having a skills section, um, getting certifications that apply to my major, and also whenever I'm writing the bullet points for things that I've accomplished in each um, job or 
volunteer activity, I made sure to give kind of technology I was using. So the technology I was using, the result of what I did and using numbers and kind of things that I achieved that are outside of my normal job description or things like that. So let's say that, um, I don't know, you work front desk somewhere, you can say like used Excel to prove, like it depends, like my friend does like kind of sales, so she utilized tools like Excel to in increase the sales in 15% by creating some kind of like special um, document for her team to use, like something like that where you're saying the tool you use so they know like, oh okay, so they know how to use this. Um, like if you're doing art like Photoshop or like tools for that or video editing um, What percentage like what numbers? What did you increase? How many people did you like lead if you were a team lead? Did you work with things like that and the result from that and how that kind of bettered the uh, the company or the, the team or the place that you're working at that is my main <laughs> Spiel on all of that stuff in preparation. We have our preparation phase kind of talked about so once I did that then the interviewing actually began for the actual interview, so I did mine online. I think now they're kind of in person, so I really am not so fam too familiar with interviewing in person because I did mine kind of during COVID times. But for me, I literally had a ring light set up. Like I cared so much about, I feel confident I have the part down to actually talk, but also I wanna look good, I wanna feel good, and I wanna feel confident. So for me, I set up a ring light. Being in front of a window, if you are doing it online, makes a big difference like helps them see you better you just look brighter your smile looks wider it makes a big difference i know that's like cosmetic who cares it, it does make a difference because i did from my interviewers get compliments on like um, my lighting have a good background solid background i just use like a white wall because i wanted it to be not distracting all of that fun stuff um, i even took little sticky notes and i because i was using my laptop i would just stick a little bit like helpful reminders like oh for this story or oh these bullet points for like you know oh I want to say my major I want to say this like you know just an outline for myself and I put them kind of around the screen and avoiding the camera so that way I could still look at my screen but also read the sticky notes and kind of give a better answer if I felt a little bit anxious so by that point I feel like I had been doing way more preparation than like other people. I'm not saying everyone, but like out of my friends. And we all had same major, same qualifications, everything. But I was doing insane preparation because I'm just overly anxious and I was doing all this. Um, I had my first interview and I actually landed the job. I felt really comfortable and confident about the place I was gonna work at. I decided, okay, I'm gonna go for it. And I know I should have applied to multiple places. I only applied to one job and I know that's luck, but I also do feel like with the amount of preparation I did compared to other people I knew that applied at the same company that I would have like in school, I thought did better than me and they didn't get the job. And I really think it had to do with my preparation. What I'm telling you guys is prep all you can. You have to do that to stand out these days. For interview, really try to make sure you're very engaged, uh, making a lot of eye contact, being confident, Kind of listening to your interviewer and if you do need to take time to think on a question it's totally okay to just kind of be like and take a pause and then start your answer you don't have to be like um like like so you know you don't have to mumble stumble just to get the answer started just wait a sec pause and answer the question um one more thing i think very helpful during interviews is to at the very end if they say do you have any questions ask questions ask good questions and do your research about the company for the questions if you have done good research about the company um, and you're able to do that you can kind of take like the company values the company motto translate that into your own terms and kind of use that to ask questions so if you're a company, I think um, I applied, there's a lot of opportunities for philanthropy and volunteering and things like that. So I made sure to ask a question about that because I knew that was one of the company values and they were like very impressed. They're like, oh yeah, we have this program and this program you can do about volunteering. And I was super excited. I was like, okay, perfect. So you can always just ask, I even asked like, is there anything that we need to revisit through my interview today that made you feel like you 
maybe would hesitate to hire me and can we go over it? Not in a desperate way, but kind of almost a second chance to explain something that might have been misinterpreted and that might be controversial if you should say that or not. I did and they were like, no, like you did great. So, you know, it really depends. I asked a lot more if like the team valued culture or performance more, so that will tell you a lot. They're not only interviewing you, you are interviewing them to find out if you're gonna be a good fit and be happy there because really at the end, like what matters is your happiness and if you're gonna enjoy working there. So don't just think like, oh my gosh, are they gonna take me? Are they gonna take me? Are they gonna like me? No, think like, do I like them? Do I wanna work here? Do I fit in here? Do I like the culture? All of that. So for me, I like identified things that are important to me. Like I wanted to work somewhere where the culture was super important and it wasn't about like constantly competing for performance. I didn't like that. I wanted a healthy learning environment and a good culture. So that's one of the reasons that I ended up choosing the place that I did because of the great culture. As far as like after your interview, after you get your job, transitioning and all of that stuff, I have to say update your LinkedIn and keep your LinkedIn updated because like you should always be applying. Like even if you're in a current role, apply while you're happy because it could turn out so quick where you're unhappy. So just constantly being applying, identifying opportunities for yourself. Even if you're like totally satisfied with your job, just do it anyway because you never know and you never know like what kind of amazing opportunity that you can't pass up will come up on. Talk about a little bit more about when you actually are entering your first job and kind of advice for that. And then I will wrap up the video, I swear. So, all right, you nailed your first job, you're in it. What are things you can do to get better? Okay, first of all, ask your manager, and you can also ask this in the interview, maybe if you're interviewing with the actual manager, that would be great, but sometimes you're not, it's like more of a recruiting team. If you interview with your manager, ask. Otherwise, ask this when you first meet your manager. Be like, hey, what do you want me to accomplish in the first 30, 60, and 90 days of this position? Like, what is gonna set me up for success? What can I do to be like an amazing employee at 30 days, 60 days, and 90 days? Because like, they're gonna be like, wow, like she really asked that. She really wants to know how to be an achiever and that's already gonna make you look super good. Like, your manager knows that you're setting goals for yourself and you're gonna meet them and that is amazing and you're giving them a timeline as well. That way, when you have your performance review, you're like, yeah, I did exactly what you said. And like, you just already know it's gonna go well. Ask your questions while you have the advantage to do so. So when you first join, you're new. Like you're brand new. Everyone expects you to not know stuff. They expect you to be learning and they're expecting you to ask questions. It's worse to try to not ask questions and then later on be like so lost. Like don't do that. I started on my team with this guy who started at the same time as me. I really felt he was more qualified for the job. Like, I felt he had more qualifications, whatever. We had the same job, same role, same team. We join, and I am like, again, I'm like a very overly prepared person. So I am like asking, I go to all my teammates, I'm asking questions. I'm like, how do you do this? What's this? What's the best way to do this? Like asking questions all day, every day for the first like what, one to two months of my job. So then I'm like documenting all of this so I can learn the job better. He, on the other hand, kind of just went with the flow, you know, did his work, like did, you know, he got his stuff done, but at the same time he wasn't really identifying how to do it in a better way or be more efficient, things like that. My manager, my team leads are discussing our performance and they're saying like, oh, like why does he suck? Like not suck, but they were kind of in a nicer way saying, why does he suck? Like what's wrong with him? Why can't he just be like me? Like they were like, why can't he just be like you? But why was my performance so much better than his? Really, I think it had to do with me asking questions. So do that, ask questions. Don't be scared and also like don't wait to ask questions because then people are going to be like, um, why didn't you know this like when you first joined? You should know. So again, ask questions, take advantage, document everything. The topic of documenting everything. I need, you guys need to know that you should be having an accomplishments log. Update it weekly, okay? Put in your accomplishments log like you know, everything you accomplished basically and everything you did to improve your team, improve your company, improve where you work because you have to do a performance review right at the end of the year or whatever, maybe quarterly, maybe twice a year, whatever your like job does. 
I think everyone does this and if you don't have good solid evidence of what you did to show on that it really hard it really can harm your performance even if you are an amazing employee your manager you know they're tracking so many things how are they going to remember what you did five months ago they're not and the only person who's going to remember is you and if you don't write it down like you will forget like time goes on you're not going to remember i definitely have this issue so what i do is i'll like have my accomplishments log in a google doc or whatever and i'll have like january february whatever and i'll try to have like five to six accomplishments throughout each month and i'll put like percentages numbers what i achieved like what was the result all that um, tools I learned, things like that, and I try to write it almost like a resume bullet point where I'm saying like, okay, this is what I did, this was the percentage I used, this was the tool I used, something like that. Do that and keep up with it because it's going to save your bum, save your butt at the end of the year when you do your performance review. You can just copy paste it right on there and you're good. And then your manager, like, they love you for this because you're making their life easy by literally just saying everything they need to know about you because when they have to report about you or decide who gets a promotion or decide who's like doing the best they can easily look at your numbers and be like wow like this person killed it and they know so do that right i'm talking so much with my hands today sorry write out everything right even if it's small you can always take it off at the end of the year just write out your accomplishments on top of that i swear this is like one of my last points and then i'm wrapping up I would recommend to write down like a master list and you can just kind of use your accomplishments log for this, but write a master list of bullet points on your job, right? Like almost stuff that you're gonna put on a resume. So just put like master list, this company, bullet points. And you're gonna put like, I mean, just put like 50 things on there or whatever you accomplished and write them, do like a little bit of work up front. write them kind of like a really good resume bullet point. So. Again, what you did, how you accomplished it, what tool you did, how that made the team better, percentages, numbers, all that. Do that for like all of your accomplishments so that later on when you apply for jobs and you want to get a new job or new position, you have this huge master list to pull from that you can just take four to five bullet points and use that for your future resume or your, you know, putting putting on your resume for this current job. That way it's easier when you're applying to jobs and you're not like, oh my God, like what are my accomplishments? You know. And if you apply to future jobs, you can pick and choose which ones match that next job better. So amazing tip. I love this tip. It's helped me, saved me so many times. I have a master list for like all of my jobs and it's amazing. Okay, and that comes to my last point and that is apply, apply, apply. Like once you nail that job, keep applying. Keep updating your resume, keep updating your LinkedIn because you never know what's gonna happen. Don't get too comfortable, okay? I've seen this mistake where people get stuck in the same job for eight years, nine years, and they don't move. I mean, unless that's your goal, that's good. But like, let's say your goal is to move up. You've gotta like make yourself uncomfortable. You've gotta volunteer for opportunities. You've got to get a mentor. I have two mentors right now. I really wanted a female mentor in my life for career, career wise. And I have one who's a mom and one who's a soon to be mom. So it's like very helpful to bounce ideas off of them and get advice from them. Who they, They've been in the workforce like 10 more years than I have. So apply when you're happy, keep everything updated stay networking. I, I go to networking events like once every few months just to meet people, exchange LinkedIn, things like that. Um, always be doing that because you just, you never know. You have to be vigilant and you have to stay on the edge. So you have the edge over people in, I think it's three year rule or four year rule or something. So it's like the first year of your job, you want to make sure you're getting acclimated, learning it, doing really well. Second year of your job, um, you want to be like an expert at your job or you want to do something amazing that's going to put you like over other people. So if there's like an opportunity for you to be on a project or do something that's like outside your team, like doing something amazing for the company, do that in your second or third year. And then in your third or fourth year, so if you do the four year, the fourth year you should be actively applying because you've already done something amazing. Now you're actively applying. And as you're applying, um, you're an expert in your role. So if you get an offer that's amazing, you can come to your manager and be like, hey, I provide all this value for the team. Here's my offer. Do you want to match it? If not, like I'm out of here, bye. And then you've salary hopped, you've job hopped. 
and you're doing better. Yeah, I'm not an expert, but that, that is actually all my advice. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. I know I went on a long tangent, but yeah, I'm really, you know, passionate about this topic. Any advice, anything, any questions, tips you guys have questions on, please let me know. Anything, comments, you know, give me your experience in the workforce down below. I'm very, very interested in hearing other stories, other people's stories. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. See you all in my next video. Bye guys.